Hello everyone, welcome to this video. What I'd like to talk to you today is a continuation in videos that I've been doing over the past few months in regards to Kali Linux and whether or not it needs a firewall. Now, as I've said in previous videos, in general, you um, really don't need a firewall with Kali Linux, right? And then the other question I asked was, how do people usually use Linux? Do they usually use it in a virtual machine? Do they usually use it in an actual bare metal machine? Um, do they boot it up and put it on their hard drive or do they put it in a USB bootable? And from what I've seen and heard, especially in the Kali uh, Discord, a lot of people use Kali Linux, they'll install it and um, put it in as a virtual machine. And there's no problem with that. I'm not saying that's wrong or, or you know, you shouldn't do it that way. Um, Kali Linux, like most Linux distros, can be ran from a multiple of ways and, and uses. Running it on bare metal or running it on a USB or virtual machine nothing wrong with that nothing at all but it was mentioned by somebody that um, one of the one of the the organizations and communities that uh, that is trying to teach or that does teach ethical hacking white hat hacking legal hacking known as hack the box or H TB gave out a warning and the warning was is that if you're going to use Kali Linux you don't want to use it on a on a bare metal system you want to use it in a virtual environment the reason being and I'm sure this is what a lot of you feel and, and think yourself the reason being if there is an issue if something happens if somebody happens to hack into your uh, Kali instance and they create a backdoor or something of the like or they're able to take advantage of an exploit then all you really need to do is delete that virtual machine and then start over again with another virtual machine or start over from a cloned virtual machine. You'll save that virtual machine and, and clone it and then all you got to do is create another instance from the clone. All that makes sense and everything. But the reason for this video today is it was pointed out by somebody a article that they seen the other day about a exploit that was done on VMware. I'll pull up the article now and don't worry I will include the link to this article in the video description for you to go ahead and look at. Um, but what it was was uh, VMware had done some patches due to an exploit that was recognized by a res security researcher. Now don't worry, this was done a few years back, as you can as you will be able to read in the article. It was back in 2022, right? And so they went ahead, they created a CVE on it, and they went ahead and put in the warning, and of course they went ahead and put in their patches. And they tell you which uh virtual um VMware instances disaffected. VMware Fusion, VMware ESXi, and VMware, work, VMware Workstation products. So why am I bringing this up? Why, why if everything's done, if, if, if everything is uh, fixed and there's no need for any other case of alarm or cause of alarm, why am I bringing this up? Good, good question. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because this shows me that no matter what instance you have Kali Linux installed on, it doesn't matter if it's installed as a virtual machine or on bare hard metal, 
it doesn't matter if you you know you run it as a dual boot it doesn't matter the main thing is is that you may want to consider some security measures whenever you're running Kali Linux especially if you're running it on um, another another network or or if you're auditing a another network even if you have permission such as from hack the box hack the box is a legal way of you learning how to do what is known as ethical hacking or white hat hacking and just so you know I do not condone illegal hacking I don't condone auditing anybody's network without their written expressed permission if you do that is considered illegal hacking that's wrong don't do it okay but as you can see from this article even if you put it in a VM a virtual environment you still may be prone to different exploits malware viruses backdoors what have you so that being said I would suggest for anybody that's going to use Kali Linux especially if you're going to use it for uh, capture the flag environments and, and things like that I think you should go ahead and activate and install a firewall for Kali Linux that being said if it were me I would use a firewall that's very simple and easy to use it's known as UFW um, UFW stands for uncomplicated firewall and it is a very good and common firewall that is installed and used on a lot of Debian like distros right and we'll go over how to install it real quickly let me just bring up my terminal here and the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and run an update on your Kali Linux instance no matter which one you have and you're just going to do a sudo apt update and you can include the minus y flag I always do so that I can accept it'll accept all the defaults and go ahead and install the updates right and then once you install the updates you go ahead and you install UFW and you do that with the command sudo at install again with the minus y or without if you don't use the minus y then it's going to ask you are you sure you want to install it then you can just answer yes and go ahead and install it and it's UFW right and you just install that alright um, I believe I already have it installed let's press y oh looks like on this one it was not installed okay good so I went ahead and installed UFW and let's go over a few quick commands the first to see the current status of UFW all you can do is just type in this command sudo system oops gotta learn how to spell ctl and then you want to type in status UFW okay as you can see UFW is inactive and to get out of this environment you just press Q on your keyboard and let you out you can also run one more uh, uh, command to see the status and that's just going to be sudo UFW status and then press enter and since we just installed it it is going to be inactive so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and enable it and that's with the command sudo UFW enable enter it has been enabled and then let's check the status once more hit the up arrow and choose status and it is now active alright so let's go ahead and clear the screen alright you can clear the screen either by typing in clear 
or on your keyboard at the same time if you press the control button and the letter L as in light that will also clear the screen okay so now that we have it installed and it is active let's go over a few commands that we can use and that we can run to activate it to set up a rule or a policy on your firewall for opening different ports or closing different ports or however you want to do it the first thing you want to do is you want to deny all ports from or all data from coming in to your firewall okay and that's just going to be with the command sudo ufw default deny and then you just press enter give it a few moments and then as you can see it's going to say default in default incoming policy change to deny that means all incoming policies or all incoming data will be denied will not be able to come into your firewall so now for your firewall it's it's automatically blocking anything from trying to come in and so the next thing you want to do is you might want to open some ports right let's say you're running a server a web server you might want to open up port well you're definitely going to need to open up port 80 to run a rule or policy to open up port 80 you just run a command like this sudo ufw allow space and then for port 80 you just type in 880 forward slash tcp and then you press enter on your keyboard it'll tell you rule is added and then to check the rule you just go ahead and do a sudo ufw status press enter and as you can see the rule has been added and that's how you basically add a rule to open up a port on ufw you'll need to do that if you install a, a web server like apache or um, nginx or something else like that so let's go ahead and close the screen now let's say you want to go ahead and delete that rule okay so one way that we can do this is and we're probably going to need the help command um let's go over the help command to uh, look at the different commands that you can use with ufw you're just going to do a ufw and you don't even need the pseudo rights to see this and it's going to be tac tac and then help and then these are all the commands that you can use with ufw right so the one command that we want to look at let's go ahead and clear the screen again we're going to we're going to try and look at all the commands through a ordered list and I'll show you how to do that that's just going to be sudo ufw status space and then numbered I said order but I meant numbered list and then when you press enter as you can see each one of the firewall rules has been numbered and this is going to be very handy for you because you can use these numbers if you want to delete a firewall rule or policy you can use the number and the way we do that let's see if I remember the command it's just going to be sudo ufw delete oh let's see if it's uh, if it's just one okay here it is it says deleting allow port 80 number one or port 80 TCP proceed with the procedure if you do want to proceed with it you just press Y and then press enter and it says rule is deleted and then just to verify that let's clear the screen and let's look at the status again and as you can see rule has been deleted okay and now we only have one of the rules we have one for version for TCP uh, IP version 4 and this is IP version 6 that is still up there now you if you want to delete that as well you're gonna to need to run the numbered command again 
because it is no longer number two. It's going to be number one now. Right? Let's check it out and see. Yeah, see, it's number one. It moved up. So to go ahead and delete that as well, you just go ahead. We'll hit the up arrow. We'll press number one again. If it was a number one and you had more than one rule, you just choose the number for that rule, type it in here, and press enter. It's going to ask you again, are you sure you want to delete it? You press Y for yes. You go ahead and delete it. It is deleted. You check with your status. Okay. Now, again, you can use this, these commands for installing all different types of ports and rules and policies, right? One of the other ports that I know most of you are going to use is a port 22 for SSHing. And as with port 80, to install that, you just use the same command, UFW, let's do the up arrow, see if we can find it, there we go, and we just changed this from port 80 to port 22, and press enter, and then obviously you might want to check the status, and then as you can see, Port 22 is open for both um, IP version 4 and IP version 6. Okay, let's clear the screen. And then, after you've finally done that, and you, you want to accept all your changes from uh, UFW, you can go ahead and type in the command sudo UFW, and then you can type in reload and that will save all of the changes and make sure that they all stick right and so you just do a status it should all be in there they are and then you can check out the services for UFW which again is sudo system config status and then press enter Oh, the firewall is still disabled. So let's go ahead and enable it. Press Q to get out of here. Hit the up arrow. And then the command to start it is just going to be, you probably already guessed it, start, right? Sudo system CTL or system cuddle as some people call it. Start and then UFW and then you just press enter okay and if you don't get any output that means that it was success successful in its in its operation and then we can go ahead and hit the up arrow and check the status again and it should show active and there it is it shows that it's active all right so those are so a few commands for how you can go ahead and configure and install UFW and use it for opening and closing ports for your firewalls um, and for that's affected your your web server your SSHing back and forth and all that so I hope this video has helped you I hope it has informed you I hope you guys will start getting getting into the habit now of activating installing and putting in the firewall at least when you're online and maybe doing something that may require uh, you to have a certain amount of presence most of you probably still don't believe me even after looking at that uh, article but as I said I'll go ahead and include that article you can read it you can make up your own mind your own decision one way or the other I will also include a link to UFW and its commands so that you can go ahead and practice running that if you decide you want to. So that's the end of my video. Thank you very much. I hope this has helped you guys out a lot. I hope you learned something. Thank you very much and I hope you have a good day or night wherever you are. Thank you and you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.